I almost couldn't believe it when I heard it. I'm actually finally excited hearing something about something Apple is releasing later this year, namely the iPhone 8 and some new technologies that are going to make it a game changer. So in this video, let's take a look at one of the many, many new details, leaks and rumors that have surfaced about the iPhone 8 in just the last couple of weeks. So it was about two to three weeks since my last update. And wow, like I can't even hold all of these rumors. Seriously, there's so many. Most recent one is a battery rumor. Something I think all of you guys will appreciate because it seems like no matter what Apple does, the battery life just isn't getting better on their iPhones. It's partly uh, to blame because of the technology. It's at a standstill. Uh, we're at lithium polymer batteries and it's just not going further. But now Apple is circumventing that issue with the iPhone 8 uh, as a new patent suggests. So what is Apple going to be doing uh, to fix the battery life on the iPhone 8? So uh, Ming-Chi Ko, this guy that uh, has been reliably saying a lot of good things about iPhones in the past, uh, Apple rumors and leaks that have been coming true, is saying that Apple is switching to a stacked logic board layout. Now this excites me because Apple is all about improving efficiency and this is exactly what Apple is all about, making more room inside of the iPhone shell where there just isn't any. So what they're doing is basically taking the logic board, which is a flat piece like this, and they're stacking it. So this way they're creating more room inside of the footprint of the iPhone, the iPhone 8 in this matter, to put a battery. So we're gonna be seeing an L-shaped battery in there for the first time ever on an iPhone, not a rectangular battery, but an L-shaped. So Apple's dropping the L's with the iPhone 8. Now the reason this is such a big deal is because the iPhone 8 itself is going to be shrinking. The footprint of the phone is getting smaller despite an increase in the size of the display. So this creates a problem, less room for battery life. And with this little workaround, that means we can expect similar battery life to the iPhone 7 Plus, which as Ming-Chi Ko puts it, it might actually even get better just by a little bit because of the organic LED display technologies. He said that that's likely to improve it. So the milliamps is actually going to be 2700. The battery life should be the same or better. Now the piece of news this week that's having everybody lose their minds is that the iPhone 8 may cost north of a thousand dollars. Fast Company is reporting that this is indeed the case and it sounds a little bit familiar to be honest. Every single year we hear rumors about the iPhone being over a thousand dollars. Now it's true I mean even this year I paid like a thousand a hundred dollars for my 7 plus fully maxed so they'll cross over into a thousand dollar territory but Fast Company is saying it may start at a thousand dollars which is a problem. Not many people can afford that. So it totally makes sense as to why Apple would release two cheaper counterparts, the 7S and 7S Plus. But a price tag like that is going to be hard to swallow. Uh, they're citing that the two biggest reasons for it is wireless charging and uh, more memory in the actual phone. It's unclear whether that's RAM or storage. That's just what they said. There's also the new stacked logic board, uh, 3D Touch Gen 2, the larger L-shaped battery, the faster internals, the glass casing. There's so much to consider as to why $1,000 would be justifiable. But Man, I mean, if you don't want to spend that much, you don't have to. They'll certainly have the same priced, faster iPhones, the 7S and 7S Plus. Also in the same report, Fast Company is saying several other things about the iPhone 8. So I'll start with the design. They actually gave us some hints about what it'll look like. And what they said is it'll look something like a smooth black monolith with very few visual interruptions to its sleek design. So this is something that I've heard before, Johnny Ives' vision of the iPhone in the future. He said he wanted it to look like a flat slab of glass. So it'll have no interruptions, it'll be completely smooth, and it looks like this might be actually it. The 10th anniversary iPhone may be Johnny Ives' dream. Now, does that make for a particularly good phone uh, to be a cold, flat slab of glass? We'll have to see. Also, more details from this report, the iPhone 8 may have even less physical buttons. So Fast Company also said, no volume button, no actual mute switch, and no power button. Those would all be the capacitive type uh, buttons, just like the home button on the iPhone 7 this year. Now, that's not a particularly good idea. The volume one, I'm all for, yeah, get rid of those buttons. Uh, the reason Apple is even doing this is for the water resistance. They're upping it to IP68, so they gotta plug all those holes on the iPhone. So the volume button can go. We actually imagined it this way in uh, my concept design, so we had a capacitive volume button, but the iconic mute switch, when you're in a meeting, you know, you're in class and your ringer goes off. I mean, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go into the phone, unlock it, and then quickly mute it? 
that's not as fast as just clicking one button and having it die right there, I mean, the sound. So I think Apple should not kill that one, don't touch it. And the power button, I mean, I'm for having a capacitive one, but how? How will it work? What if your phone is in a state where you have to hard reset it? How are you going to do that without a physical button? So either they're not right or Apple is going to have some solution for it, but I just don't see that one happening, the power button. A piece of news that just surfaced that's actually very interesting and hints at the future is Apple just joined the consortium of QI standards. So the association that brings us wireless charging to almost every phone, every area we see it in, Apple is part of 213 members of this whole association now. So that doesn't necessarily mean they will bring wireless charging just because of this, but it certainly helps for Apple to be part of that. So uh, actual survey conducted said that 90% of people considering phones wanted to have wireless charging. You know, it's, it's a smart step for Apple to go in to bring wireless charging in. And now that they're part of this consortium or association, that's even better. Now, Maka Takara has released a report on this year's iPhones. And when they do that, people listen because Maka Takara is a very reputable uh, source for Apple information and leaks. So what they're saying is that the exclusive 5-inch iPhone 8 organic LED model with the glass casing is indeed happening. They're also saying that the two uh, existing iPhone models, the 7 and 7 Plus, will be upgraded to the S and S Plus models uh, with speed improvements and will still feature that metal casing. Also, only the iPhone 8 exclusive model, the 5-inch one, will have wireless charging. So the rest will not. And that makes sense. Metal makes it very hard for energy to transmit, like inductive charging, through the casing. So, you know, this report makes sense. So for my next point, I wanted to say that wireless charging will happen on all three models. And this one is coming from Ming-Chi Ko, the guy I trust the most when it comes to iPhone rumors. So we're at a clash here. It's Maka Takara versus Ming-Chi Ko who are saying different things. I mean, it just, it just doesn't make sense. Maka Takara correctly predicted the jet black iPhone 7 Plus. They were the first to actually hint that there would be no headphone jack and even a detail as small as the earpiece would be longer on the 7 Plus and 7. You know, they got right. And uh, Ming-Chi Ko has been doing this for years and years and years. He has about an 85% success rate. So this one is very interesting. When two very reputable people or sources are saying opposing things, who knows which one will be correct. But I'm leaning with Maka Takara just because uh, I don't think Apple would put wireless charging an exclusive feature on all the phones, especially a budget one. Also in the same report, it's detailed that the iPhone 8 will be hotter. So because of wireless charging, the phone will run at a hotter temperature. This creates an issue with 3D Touch. 3D Touch can't function very well uh, when the phone is hotter. So Apple actually had to create a new layer, a graphite layer in 3D Touch which is Gen 2, by the way, uh, to fix this. That alone is $5 production value of the iPhone. So if you're wondering why you're going to be paying for $1,000, those $5 can be blamed on wireless charging as a side effect. Also in the same report from Makatakara, some very disturbing details. Uh, Makatakara is claiming that the wireless charger will not be included in the box with the iPhone. That one I'm sort of okay with. That's kind of how Galaxy handles it. They sell the wireless charger separately, unless in some promos they include it. Uh, but what he's saying that disturbed me was that the actual headphone jack adapter will not be included in the box. So it was at first included just as a teething issue because some people still had you know, analog headphones they wanted to plug in into their iPhone, but Apple is really taking off the training wheels now and forcing you to use you know, either lightning-based Bluetooth headphones, I mean headphones, and Bluetooth headphones. Also, the most worrying one is there will be no lightning to USB-C adapter in the box, no charging cable. So you're getting the phone and maybe some headphones in there, but no actual way to charge it? Is he serious? I mean, no, there's no way that's going to happen. But if it does, that's just a whole nother level of cheapness by Apple. This one is actually quite exciting. So Apple has created a new industrial process for polishing ceramic with a laser. No buffing, nothing like that, a laser. Sounds really cool, but why? So in the actual notes of uh, this patent, it's detailed that it could be used on phones, meaning we could be seeing a ceramic white finish on a future iPhone. So actually I wanna tell you guys, uh, about ceramic, the Mi Mix currently is one of the only phones on the market that uses this as its actual material. And I gotta say, I'm blown away. I've had this thing for a while. I haven't really been taking care of it. It's just been laying around, throwing stuff on it. You know, most other iPhones I have, Galaxy phones have scratches because of that on the display. This one has nothing. If I uh, actually clean this up, where are my rags? 
Uh, it actually looks brand new. There are no scratches. Ceramic seems to be a perfect material for making a phone out of. So I'm hoping Apple uses this process to make iPhone 8, even the 7S and 7S Plus finishes. Iris scanning may actually happen this year, although it's coming from not the most reliable source. Digitimes is claiming that Apple is indeed working on an iris scanner and they will be putting it into this year's iPhone. And researchers at Bluefin are saying that Apple will be starting production of the iPhone 8 earlier this year, in June. So this is in an attempt to fix low yield rates and fix any manufacturing issues they may run into. So I wasn't even able to get an iPhone 7 or 7 Plus uh, through the pre-ordering website just because they sold out right away. It seemed like Apple had almost no stock and if they start production earlier, that means more people will have a chance to get the iPhone 8 on launch day. And the one I saved for last is very intriguing. So a leaked keynote advertisement or invitation from Apple. This is coming from dbrand and it hints at a wireless future with Apple. It's very in line style-wise with many other keynote invitations. It's just unusual that it's here so early. I mean, the iPhone will be getting released in September. Why do we see this now? But if this indeed is a leaked version of that, that's quite impressive. It might actually even be for the March event for the iPads. Who knows? I mean, it's just really cool. Uh, this stuff doesn't usually get leaked and I hope it's real. But guys, thanks so much for watching. That's the latest on the iPhone 8. A ton of stuff. I mean, too much. Uh, a lot of good stuff though. I'm very excited about the battery, the iris scanner, improved water resistance, uh, the wireless charging. There's just so much to get excited about. So hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. Peace.